That was the entrance to the gallery. That's the top end. That's the top piece of the gallery. Okay. The entrance to it. And that's where, when the gallery was was in the church <coughs> before the fire in 1899, it seated 160 people. Okay. And what, the window? And this was the stained, This would have been a stained glass window at the time. Okay. And at the time in 1899, it was valued at 500 pounds. In 1899. In 1899. So in today's value? That single window. And the, the other window then, on the, on the east side of the church, was also valued at £500 okay. at the time. Both of them destroyed completely in the fire. Okay, well we'll go on up and see. And that's where the, origina that's where the reckon the fire originated, where the organ was situated in the gallery, right here at the back beside the... Side what year was that? Tower, 1899. 1899, okay. The 11th of May, 1899. Wednesday evening, the evening before Ascension Thursday. Oh, wow. Oh. So this stairs is probably you, Martin, is it? Uh, this wooden stairs to access uh, the clock. This is just the stairs. And the bell tower. Right. Yeah. The tower. Okay. And this is your church bell? This is the church bell. And when was that put in? That's manually rang before church services. Okay. So that was put in in 1901. Okay. And specially designed as he made for Valdez Hall. Specially designed and then printed on it is the date of 1901. Okay, okay, okay. And this obviously look at the mechanism with the old cast iron, the frame that it's built on. And this is the way, okay. Right, and she moves. And obviously we're going to give it one ring just for the purpose of today. as it was to make it free for ringing just that's a big lump of metal keep it topped up for oil for because it's exposed to the weather okay because of the louvers to let the sound out and how is that rang that's manually rang from the floor okay a rope attached and a wire rope attached to this mechanism here okay oh okay now i see the way it operates and as you pull the rope down below it swivels the bell okay that's the pendulum, the housing for the pendulum, for the clock. Okay. And as you can see there, it's swinging back and forth. It's a hundred weight, a hundred weight weight on the bottom of the pendulum. Okay. And the pendulum itself is eight feet in length. Okay. And made from hickory. Hickory. And I think uh, for a, a pendulum that's over six foot, each tick is the equivalent of 1.2 seconds. 2 seconds. That's the way it's designed on. And you have three other bells, two other bells uh, that see you then. One is the strike chain train. That strikes on the hour. That's the hour. That's the hour. That's the and, hour you can, and you can see, I suppose, if you look at it here, this is the, this is the hammer. Spring loader is supported here by a spring lead, so to stop it banging, that it gives a, a positive strike, a positive strike. And this, that was the, that's the hour. That's on a on a concrete above in in, in the clock. That the strikes one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, as the thing goes round to twelve. And then the other bell you have over here was a quarter hour chime. Then you strike on the quarter hour, on the half hour, and, and on the hour. 
quarter hour, half hour, and three quarter hour, it used strike. This one here? This one there, that one there, the small okay. one. Yeah. But that mechanism now is not operational anymore. Only the hour chime works now. Okay. And why is that, Martin? I think that was because of the vibration that was in the tower. As a result of the fire, there was the, the engineers reckoned that there was some, there may have been some structural damage to the tower. Okay. Because, because of the intensity of the fire in 1899, and they reckoned that the strike, continuous striking of the quarter hour chime, and the vibration of it would distort the stonework to some degree. Yeah. Minutely, but still at the same time, they were afraid that it may. And as a result of that, then they reckoned that it was better to disengage the quarter hour chime completely. Yeah, and how that uh, strike operated, similar to this one with the hammer on the Similar to that one. The and there is a lot of vibration in a tower from a bell when it strikes. Yeah. So as you see, as you can see there around your shoulder height there, where you're standing, Kevin, there's a, there's, there's a reinforced concrete banding yes. around the tower to secure the tower to stop any movement that may be in place. So there's, it's, and the concrete doors are put in in 1990 to uh, counteract any slight movement and just to solidify the tower to stop it from ever moving again. Okay. So will we go and have a look at the, the clock itself? This is the clock, the, the, ch the Chancellor clock uh, that you're looking at. And previous uh, years, ago, it was wound. Uh, you have the, the, the striking chain, the time, the time train, and the lot. So you had the different winding, 57 for the time, uh, 161 uh, for the hour strike, and 157 for the quarter. Uh, so each, that was wound each week. Everybody, uh, a person designated had to come up and wind that 57 times, 161 and 157. And while it was being wound, uh, the clock never lost time because it had a mechanical spring in here to keep it on, on time all the time while it was being wound. Now in, uh, in 19, what day is it on that, Merton? 19? 1999. 1999. In 1983, Jimmy Cabin uh, fitted uh, an, uh, a mechanical winding key for this clock. It was the first one of its kind to be fitted to a clock. And in 1999, Bertie McClure from Belfast came down here and fitted a, a Smith & Derby automatic winding units. Two of, one for the strike and one for the time. So you have two of them. And it's on a tension rope uh, that goes back up to the weights. And we can show you the weights here at the back. You can see both weights here as they come down. One for the time and one for the striking uh, mechanism. And they're very light weights, which means it puts very little pressure on the clock. By, by putting in the automatic winders, we're able to reduce the weights uh, significantly, uh, so it puts less pressure on, on the clock. And the pendulum gives us momentum with the weights, so it's continually going down, and as it moves down, then it'll automatic wind. So it walks at about 60 degrees up and down, so you have a given distance. And there's a fail-safe switch, a safety switch on the up. Because if it wound up too far, it would get up and get caught in the pulleys and damage the, damage the rope on the clock. Uh, but it can go down, all it can do is run out the rope on the way down. So it runs between upper and lower limit. And you can see we have two red marks on it, just a chime, upper and lower. So it's walking in that distance all the time. And as of the clock, when was the clock put in, Martin? The clock was put in after the fire. There was the original clock was put in in the in eighteen seventy nine. Okay. The original clock was put in by the third Earl of Clancarty. Okay. And donated to the townspeople of Ballinasloe. And the clock, the church, it's Church of Ireland, it does not own the clock. It's housed in the tower for the townspeople of Ballinasloe. Okay. And uh, as a result of the fire then in 1899, the clock was completely destroyed, the clock that was in it originally. So in 1900, 1901, the clock was, was uh, put, put back in again, but the original clock had a three foot face. Okay. 
and the one that they put back in, they put it as a six foot face. So okay. now it can be larger seen, dial. Larger dial, so it can be seen from for, for a, from a long distance. And the numerals on the clock face are gold leafed, as <coughs> are the hands. The four faces of the clock, each of the hands are gold leafed as well. <coughs> and um, that clock is there since 1901. And the very same clock, the very same mechanism, the very same workings that are there working away since then. Okay. And Merton, just a question. Would the people of Banlasow and the surrounding areas be aware uh, that, the that the clock uh, is not owned by St. John's Church? I'd say very few people would be aware of that. Yeah, fact. correct. Very few people would be aware of that fact. They, they think probably that it is because it's housed in the church that it okay. belongs to the church. Okay. But it does not belong to the church at all. Okay, it's, that's very it's, interesting. It's the property of the people of Balnaslow, which is now, uh, which is now taken care of by the Galway County Council. And it's a significant landmark in Balnaslow. Significant landmark on a prime site overlooking the town and surrounding areas, and can be seen from for quite a distance. And there's stories of people on the bog knowing when tea time was and lunch time was. Correct, when absolutely. The, when they look up at the clock and see. Yeah, for the farmers. For the farmers as well. That's how yeah. they used when, when nobody had, had uh, watches or Correct. anything of the sort. So they looked up at the clock and it gave them, it gave them uh, the, the time when to eat the bit of dinner. Yes, and we might have a look inside the clock and just see, go into a little bit more detail about the clock uh, for a second. The count wheel is made of brass and that's uh, designed out for 1 o'clock all the way around to 12. You can see the slots in it there. For it, when, it, when it strikes, uh, she indexes into it at 1, 2, 3, 4 and the same way all the, round, all the way around uh, uh, to, to 12 to twelve o'clock. The reason the gears are made out of brass is uh, so that they don't expand and contract. Because in the winter time, uh, it's quite difficult to keep the time uh, with the clock because of the cold. Metal uh, expands and contracts. And this is uh, your dial. This simulates uh, your hands outside here to give you an indication as to what way your hands are, 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 are positioned on the outside. This dial tells me now that we're at about 25 past, a little, little after 20 past 12 at the moment. We do know. Now, and the time is changing this week, so we're going to change the time on it uh, today. To, it has to go back, fall back. Uh, and it's Chancellor uh, that, that made it. And this is your chain here. So see you have all your brass gears as well here. On it. And if we go around, we'll go around the other side and we can see. And if I can point in here, uh, down here to you, but at, at, at the pendulum, Paul, just back in here. This is down in, in this one here. You can put on a washer on to increase or decrease the time as required. It's exactly the same as Big Ben. In Big Ben, what to do is to put a penny uh, onto the pendulum. Add or subtract. And you have to add it in the winter time and subtract it in the summer time because of the change of metal. And on here you have what's known, this guy here is what's known as a wind vane. It dampens when the strike happens so that it, you have a positive strike that it doesn't bounce. This acts as a wind vane, as a damper, to cushion the strike. And we can go around the other side and I'll try and show you uh, a bit more on the, the, the double-legged three-point escapement of the clock. This is a pendulum with the, with the, with the hickory shaft. And this, this is a, these are the weights for the double-leg escapement. And the pendulum gets a slight, a slight kick. And each time what's happening with the mechanism, push, stop, push, stop. And this is your... Time controller again, your speed controller, like your wind vane. You notice the tick has gone by when I stop this, dampens it, cushions it. And you can hear a very positive tick coming from the clock, it means it's fitted, time is good on it. And uh, the pendulum, this is a piece of metal, it's uh, 12 tau thick. This piece of metal here, and it's holding, carrying the weight of the pendulum, and it's there since 1901, and it's spring loading back and forth every day, every hour, every minute, and and the, also on the three point escapement, there's carbide tips fitted on it to give it a very positive stop and to uh, increase the lifetime cycle of the legs, because otherwise the brass will wear.
and you can hear it's a very positive. This is your drive. This is the drive shaft going all the way to a four-way diverter gear up on top, which we will show in a few minutes, uh, to give to drive for the hands out to the clock. And you can see up here it's going at a slight angle, and the reason it's at a slight angle so is that uh, all the shafts are the same length out, uh, outside, going out to each dial. And if you go back and look uh, at the, if we look uh, back here for a second. These are your shafts going out. This is the shaft going out to the clock. Main shaft going out. This is your counterbalance exactly opposite uh, the minute hand. And there's a 12 to 1 reduction in, in the gears in here. So 12, 12 to 1 reduction for the, between the minute hand and the hour hand. The counterbalance works uh, that is quite the opposite to the minute hand. And they're perfectly balanced. And you have a tube inside for, for the hour hand and for the minute hand. So it's a double tube in here, there's a brass tube. And what is done, what we've done outside in the cup, the dials are copper, painted black. We'll put stainless steel hubs into them and polypinko uh, bushings. So it's a lot, and we extended the bushings from 30 mil to 60 mil to extend the life cycle of the, of the clock. We also put perspex on here to stop dust or dirt getting into the gears. And you have all brass gears again uh, on this. So it's a more or less to cover up. And we still can lubricate the bushing out through inside here. Yeah, it's all it's all mechanical and how the bell strikes it's all it's all done on the cam through the, through the count wheel and this is just to show you and if the wind vane wasn't there what you could get is you could get fluttering what they call bouncing on it so it's dampening all the way down yeah and you can see the lead weights here on the on, on the three-point escapement to give the pendulum that small kick so that's where it gets its inertia and the movement is there plus the weights so it's continually going back and forth and you can see on here there's brass put on the hickory handle here just to support because otherwise it would wear into the handle A very positive take off it, good sound. And there's no change to any of these parts uh, since 1901, they're original. Now okay, uh, Jimmy Cobham got this gear cut at one stage uh, in, in a company in Longford. But you can see on the, the little carbide tips, and this is your stop position. So it's very important to stop. If it missed the stop, it'll run to the bottom, it's just slip. But it's a double-legged, three-point escapement, similar to Big Ben. And we can go up, Paul, and have a look at the uh, diverter, uh, four-way diverter for a moment now. Go this is your four-way diverter. So it gives you the drive out, teach you. And, and that's how the, how the drives are done, all on brass. And they can be all adjustable if we want to get any of the dials to come in sync with each other. But we now know that the dials are set correctly. But you can see here, Paul, you know, I mean, it's crude enough, you know, the four-way diverter. So it's difficult to get this clock be bang on time because look at the amount of play you have in the gear so and it's the same out to the each four so all four shafts are the same that's why the angle is coming up with a such a position that if you matter what shaft you take off they're all the same now you can see it winding here's just coming up with the winding automatic winding coming up so you get to the cutout switch Now the danger would be if that went up, all the, if it went up all the way to strike against the pulley, that would be the danger to break. So we have allowed uh, half a metre of free whip, but it has to be positive that it stops there. If it goes down, it does no harm, but it comes up, she would break the winder and break the rope and do a lot of damage. The tower, from where we came up from, where the clock mechanism is, yeah. there's the stonework is splayed back towards the centre of the tower. Okay, for what reason? On all the four sides, it's splayed out that way. And the reason it's splayed out that way was to house an obelisk that's uh, on, on garbly grounds. Okay. And it's still there at the moment. And it was to be put on top of the church here for just to finish the tower in a in a pinnacle or a, a, okay. a, a pointy... Uh, finished completion. Fin finished, yeah. finished completion and, and, uh, and on top of it. But now we're standing on a flat roof Okay. And uh, obviously lead roof. A lead roof at the moment, yeah, lead roof. But uh, I don't think that obelisk will ever be put up here now. Okay, well, me and you'll hardly lift it up. Yeah, no. So. Yeah, no. 
And is there, I see an ordnance survey. Is there? There's an ordnance survey marker there. Okay. And what's the purpose, sir? I suppose just because it's the height of it. And the lights are. And the lights said the lights were, were put up uh, by uh, Kevin Kniff, Jimmy Common, and um, Josh Ward. Yeah. With brackets on. With brackets on it to to illuminate the four faces of the clocks for nighttime viewing. And it's they're they're on a time switch. That's that's. And Mark, I noticed this is something new, is it? This is a new lightning conductor system that we put in. It's a pulsar system and it's a very high-tech lightning conductor system that lightning when it's when it's strike or about to strike it sends out leaders and leaders will go to the place where it's going to strike and when if this gets a hit from a leader from a lightning source it will pulse give a pulse out, a, an outburst of a pulse that will disperse the lightning from striking the building. Okay. And it, it will not strike any part of the building at all. The whole building is covered. Okay. Whereas with the old lightning conductor there was system, an old one on with the old lightning conductor system, that's only a single point. That's only a single point um, protection. Okay. Only that point. This this side could be hit. Any other place of the building could be hit. But with this new mechanism here. It protects the whole building because it okay. sends a pulse out and covers the entire building. So now yeah, and I notice it's a, this is a, like an earth rod, is it? That's the earth's connection back down the whole way to the ground. Okay. And it's uh, six meters. It's six meters into the ground. Okay. Uh, and copper, a copper earth rod that's gone six meters into the ground. So okay. It, it is well earthed to the ground. Okay. And uh, so we'd be hoping that. It'll do its job and <laughs> we'll never be struck by lightning. And I notice on the other pinnacle there you this copper. That's right, that's just uh, a copper band that was put up by Jimmy Cobbin okay. and, and your good self, uh, Kevin Kniff, uh, many moons ago, just to uh, strengthen the pinnacle. Okay, support it, or in other words. To support the pinnacle. Okay. And, and this pinnacle here, where the lightning conductor, the old lightning conductor is, there. Reckon the engineers reckon it may have been hit by a lightning uh, strike at some stage, and there's uh, a crack on the pinnacle. But Rainey's steeplejacks and company pinned the pinnacle with stainless steel rods, and you can just see the marks. Okay, they look like they're at an angle, you I think. You can just see yeah. the marks, so they're gone down. There's stainless steel rods gone in just to secure the that pinnacle, so that, okay. that pinnacle will never move and strengthen again okay. from where the crack was. Okay. Okay, and there's a fantastic view here today of a lovely oh, fantastic. Uh, fantastic. sunshiny fantastic. day. Fantastic yeah. View, yeah. Yeah. So he's, yeah. He's working and endless work that he did. And a great debt of gratitude is due to the countless people who wound the clock. Correct. Down through the years, correct. As you were saying previously, yeah. the, the number of wines. Yeah, Bertie Walker wound. was absolutely a man who wound it continuously. And had to be wound on a, on a weekly basis throughout the year. Yeah, and you also had to be careful when you were winding that you didn't wind it too tight, you didn't overwind. Quarter to the one. Where will it you? Huh? Not too bad. You can see there from from where you're standing how the, the tower sides are square. But just there at the top of the ladder it starts to splay back in the way to the centre of the tower itself 
on all the four faces. And each corner then is more reinforced coming back out as well. And that was the seat, that was the seat of the of Lesk that's now in Garbley grounds. So it was, uh, and you can actually, you can actually, if you tap the stones, you can hear the hollow sound because some of the, it's called spalding from the intense heat of the fire in 1899. And that stonework, that's the stonework that was there at the time. And from the intense heat, it has actually broken away some of the outer casing of the stone. And you can actually hear the, the hollow sound of that stone. So there was a very intense heat. So the, the tower itself acted like a chimney. And most of the heat, or all the heat from the floors and the organ and the gallery at the time, all came back up this way and were consumed with fire. And in the Western Star of 1899, there is a lovely report of how the fire took place and the result of the fire. A very well, very nice worded report of the fire of 1899 which completely destroyed the church and rebuilt again then. But the original church itself was built here in, in 1843 and it was consecrated on the 22nd of October, 22nd of October 1845 it was consecrated. So and then, uh, and, and the clock then, the original clock that was put into the, was put in in 1879, and then the fire in 1899. And the church, the church that was, the, the church here now, that's here now, was built on the site of a previous church that was destroyed by fire. So it has a history of fire, and uh, we're, we're hoping <laughs> that it'll never happen again. Yeah, one ten and eighty. Yeah, and these are all gold leaf now, Paul. All got an external contractor uh, to do all well, these. So it's metal and painted it's, gold. It's brass. Like it's brass. brass. No, not painted. It's gold leaf. Every section. Super gold. Strip of gold. Strip of gold. Up. And it incre improves with wear. And yeah, you, this car, this hand was repaired one time. One time. So now your counterbalance for that hand is in here. Because when that's just going up, if they were, and we, I, they're... They wouldn't be able to turn it. No, up. and it wouldn't keep time. Because it's only a little wheel. And, and this is your shell, this is your note that's on. That's on a square. That hand is on a square and can only be changed at 90 degrees at any given time. But we can change the hour one inside. Yeah. And this is your new stonework now here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the granite. One, that's what was in place, like the but, stonework around the top. Yeah, because in actual fact, they're doing it in a mould, but it all cracked. All cracked, and if the water gets in behind the clock, and in actual fact, when we took out the clock here, there was a smaller dial inside it. Yeah.